It is the most dangerous place I- Stop. Did you see that? Yeah, neither did I. But as I traveled to this house, I couldn't shake my paranoia, and I felt hungry. I should have gotten takeout on my way here. This place may look simple and weak on the outside, but from what I know, every new day in there is a new beast. And I'm gonna do it for a hundred. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really believe most of what they say about this house, and I will not be taking any questions about my sanity at this point. Thank you very much. This is 100 Days in an Infinite House. <laughs> A few days ago, a friend of mine sent me a world file to this house. She knew I liked to explore Minecraft, but I had no clue what I was in for this time around. And looking back, oh man, this was a mistake. Nevertheless, my goals were simple. In a hundred days, I wanted to explore everything I could and understand what goes on behind these walls. I've even heard this place may even house some sort of creature that lurks in the corners and in plain sight. What the? Whoa, I feel kind of dreadful. I spent the day exploring the foyer of the house. It was beautiful, but nothing felt right. I walked through a door and suddenly... All right, I get it. Ha ha, the house keeps going infinitely. How scary. Oh, I'm really crumbling in my khakis. I bet if I go through the door again, I'll be right back. Okay, but will it do it again? Huh, that's odd. I thought I saw something. I decided to spend day two exploring all the rooms down the halls. If I split it up, I could get the whole bottom floor in one day, and the top in the next. Considering the windows had the beautiful sheen of unwashed coal, I couldn't really tell when it was day or night. It felt like I was watching the void. So I decided to grab a clock from the hall for no reason at all. Anyway, back to mapping out the house. The hallways on the left alternated from dining room to bedroom, back and forth, and I'd be lying if I said I trusted either one. The right side was a bit different though. This is when it started to set in that this house was much bigger on the inside. These halls had six rooms each as well. Obviously, there was the looping door, but after that there was this room of chairs. Like, I'm alone in there. Why would anyone need that? Another one was just a section of road, and then there was just a broom closet with a weird shape. Yeah, needless to say, they didn't feel right at all. But the weirdest thing was the iron door at the end of the hall. It sure as heck was not there yesterday, and behind it was another hall. I gotta say though, the most slap my shins bonkers room was in the close right hallway. Three doors down, there's, well, this. It was weird, I was in peaceful mode, but this place made me hungry. I knew I would need blocks to pass what I decided to call the gap. I had time to look around though, after all there was still a whole second floor to explore. But when I went up the stairs, I expected more hallways, then I turned right, and the stairs kept going. Nothing ventured, nothing gained though, right? So I walked for a while, and when I got to an opening, it was the foyer again. With no hallways, and the stairs just kept going past that still. I spent a while just going up, and I finally found a door in the stairs. Come to think of it, there were a lot of weird doors and holes, little danger holes. This hallway was way weirder than the others. It made my skin feel like a tarp tied to a tree on a windy day. It just kept snaking back and forth and all of the doors were either empty or led to the same hallway. And then it went up. I couldn't exactly keep going after that. So I checked some more doors and found the gap again. I was becoming less and less of a fan of the gap. By day four, I knew I needed blocks to get across, and I was ready to find them. I don't know what it was, but I could just tell I was exploring the outer limits of a shell, and this gap was the threshold past it. I would compare this house to something like an onion, but onions don't shank you in subway parking lots. I started exploring more doors and halls. I had a feeling that no matter where I went, I would eventually find my way back to the gap. That's just how it worked. I didn't want to break down the walls of this house for blocks, it just didn't feel right. And who knows what a house can do when it's angry. Then I found the broom closet again, but it was so much longer this time. The void above it was now in front of me, and I figured I could find blocks there. This was my second mistake. The first was stepping into this house. I didn't know it then, but now, 
After all I've seen, uh, I don't think I really want my eyes anymore. No, like really, you guys can have them. Are, are you allowed to sell eyes on eBay? Is there like an eBay or something? Anyway, after a certain point, it stopped feeling so industrial or weird and swapped over to just plain stone, like the strip mines I used to make. Then I got to what I guess could be called a room. It had dark holes in the roof. I could count a million different things I would rather do than look up into them, and something made that feeling just so much worse. Like, j just watch. I don't think a joke would make this any easier to cope with. By day five, I think anyone could tell things were getting just a smidgen weirder. I felt like the walls of this house were just pushing the air enough to squeeze me. Still though, I kept going for some reason. I found blocks and it took me the whole rest of the day to find the gap. It's weird how easy it was to find before I had enough dirt. In fact, I had more than enough dirt. For the first time in a while, I was feeling good. Am I putting this here to strangle you with a cliffhanger? Maybe, but I'm also gonna ask you uh, for a quick like on the video if you don't mind. Maybe subscribing too, just for future videos like this. Yeah, you know what? Scratch that. No, I wasn't dealing with this house anymore. Cat was right. This is a horrible trap. You know, hundreds of years ago, the Mesopotamians defined hell as a rotting house. Now I understand why. I finished the bridge and went through the door. On the other side was a walkway, surrounded by the same void that I just had a real wonderful vacation through. On the sixth day after walking this path for hours, I had time to cope and understand that I had no way out now. If all the doors just led to somewhere else in the walls, then I couldn't trust anything except myself probably. I did eventually find something in the darkness though. It was like a gas station roof just standing above the walkway. That was a bit of a nope. It didn't really feel right at all, but I knew once I stepped past it, there was really no going back. The beginning of the end, as they say, except it had only been six days and I still had 17 to go. I don't know if it was my paranoia getting worse, but I felt like things were watching me as well. It had been a whole week, wow. I finally saw a door at the end of the tunnel. Only when I went through did I realize I felt horrid. Waves of dread had been creeping through me like ants carving tunnels under my skin. The only way I could really describe it would be like getting back from a mining trip in your single player world to find that your chest has moved one block to the right. I hate this house, and I was beginning to believe the anger was mutual. I spent most of the first half of day eight waiting, staring out the window while I waited for the knocking to disappear, trying to get it out of my head, but it just wouldn't stop. It started out in the tune to my clock, which of course had been spinning out of control since passing the gas station roof, but the power of the knock started growing a few hours ago. I was using anything as a distraction, and I sure wasn't going to walk back across that path. Oh, do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Okay. Okay. I had seen countless hallways and odd rooms in this house, but I never expected to see entire biomes. I guess I shouldn't have put it past this place. I used some dirt to climb a tree so I could scout things out, but all I saw was fog, leaves, bark, weird floating cubes, nothing else. And when I turned around, my dirt pillar had been broken, because of course it did. Clearly this room wanted to stay pure and, and natural or something, and I guess I had no other option than to explore the forest. Nine days now. This room was much warmer than the others, which could have been nice, but walking through it became an incredible slog. You could have told me that I'd been in this house way longer than nine days, and I would have believed you in a heartbeat. I did eventually hit a wall, though, one that felt eerily similar to the gap. There must have been some sort of similar material used to build everything here. Was this place even built at all? I followed the wall for a while. I don't know what it was, but it really seemed like those lanterns were guiding me somewhere, so I followed them instead. 
I was quite literally willing to do anything to leave that oven of a forest at this point. There were so many lanterns leading me for hours and hours, and at some point I did feel like I was going in circles or recognizing certain trees, but I still trudged along, I had no option. A forest of lights is much better than any without, I'd say. Then I found a door. Finally! Salvation! And there I was, back again. The hall kept bringing me back into the foyer. Was it gloating? Bragging that it could put me in the closest room to the entrance without a chance of escape? This time the holes were gone in the ceiling, but everything was rotting. The floor was almost squishy and a smell just flew through the room. It was like decomposing oranges and old cologne mixed with the smell of war and old hotels. I couldn't stand it. It felt like I was standing in a dead man's throat. Luckily one of the hallways hadn't caved in, but I couldn't exactly say the same for myself. Making it to day 10 would have been a feat normally, but I was past being excited at this point. Every higher number felt like a deeper abyss. As I walked through the surviving hallway, they started to warp. Call me old fashioned, but I don't think hallways should look this way. At a certain point I could throw my dirt and it would fall in the wrong direction. My guts felt like they were literally folding. Who the hell treats organs like origami? That's, that's just too far, man. Too far. On day 11, I found a hallway going upwards and decided to use my last bit of dirt to get to the top. I managed to luckily save a few while climbing, so it was worth it. Above me was another hole, and at the top there was just a little lantern on a post. I kept climbing through the hole. I, I just had to see what was up there, you know? Why do I feel like something is watching me again? I really shouldn't have come up here. It was day 12, probably. I had to go through a corridor. They seemed to be all around the hallways and rooms of this house just beyond the walls, yet they were a different beast entirely. What could walk these halls? They felt like strip mines, but with that weird stone from the gap, and speak of the devil, there it was, from a different hole in the sides. It was really falling apart too, but I recognized my dirt bridge. I wasn't sure if I could get there though. I thought maybe if I jumped around a few of these holes, I could get back and return to the foyer where I knew- I don't remember the last week. I don't remember how I started falling or why I'm here. Something is very, very wrong. I am a- I started falling backwards. After what could have been literally a week of falling, the house wanted to pull me right back into those all too familiar nightmare hallways. I had to stop. I could land on one of these door frames and go through. I, I need to get back to the foyer or the- I think it's day 14. I've been bridging with my dirt for hours, but it could be days too. I don't remember yesterday. I'm getting nowhere. I'll have to go through the door again. Everything terrible always happens when I go through doors. Ah, oh, hello old friend. At this point I should have just sat a bed in a campsite down in the foyer with how often I come here. I'm over being disgusted by the holes in the wood and the mold crawling along the floors and the stench the carpet is hurling at me and the- Day 15. I need to get through this filth and grime. Something is pulling me towards it, but I don't know what. I pushed past boards and dirt and string and cloth and I finally got through. I'm gonna be honest, this hallway felt the worst yet. I couldn't trust whether I would suddenly just fall into the abyss above but I can't trust anything in this house, so there we are. These windows were the first ones I could see things through though. Was that the same forest as before? I remember that. It was weird, the more I looked outside, the more I wanted to just jump back into those trees and follow the lanterns again. That was the nicest I felt in this house, and it was still dreadful. Around the hallway was more hallway, of course. I came up with a simple plan. I could explore it for a bit, but come back to this window and climb down if I couldn't find anything. If trees could live down there, anything could. Day 16. I was halfway or something, I don't know. I hate walking under a dark sky. Anything could be up there. God, I'm so hungry. Doors were rare in this hallway so far. I had explored every one, but half led to more halls, and I couldn't stomach the others. But this was certainly new. I don't know what it was, but I felt safe to sit, rest, and feast.
On day 17, I realized I hadn't slept all this time. I hadn't claimed my room in this house, per se. I took a much-needed day to rest, using cloth and wood from the walls. I don't think sleeping was a good idea. Things changed. The walls were rotting again. Is that lantern closer? I'm still hungry. I need to leave. I'm going to the woods again. I didn't know what that was, but something wasn't right with it. What moved those lanterns? Where's the forest with the trees I know so well? One more left, a right, two lefts, and a hop. Am I beginning to know this house? I spent the day exploring the foyer of the house. It was beautiful, but nothing felt right. I walked through a door and suddenly, I was hungry again. I followed whatever that was. It seemed to have been going through. Why do I feel like I remember these walls? The weirdest of them was a grimy room with holes in the floor. I expected it to be as clean as the rest of this whatever it was, but there were weird layers of unknown filth caking the ground and an odd tree in the corner. I don't know if you realize how much you don't see. Walking for this long while this primally horrified, while this thing could be in the walls, I just want to rot and sink into the floorboards. I want to become the walls and lay still with the spiders as my hands forever grasp forward and... I need out. Okay, deep breath. Let's really look at all we know here. Who knows what this will do, but I'll try anything now. I don't know who or what I am now, except that I will escape. If this house is alive, and I have seen the heart, then I could assume the foyer is the throat. These are places inside the walls of wooden flesh. That just means that the skin is stone. Just beyond that wall could be a way out, but somehow I knew it wouldn't be that easy. The gap was always a moment in between. A pocket where I could walk between both walls and fall. I've not climbed the gap. I know the way. I saw the path. The place close to the gap. is supposed to be the gap. It was day 23. The day Cat said I would leave, but why did she know? I kept digging. All was calm. My hands hadn't felt this relieved in weeks. No part of me shook like before, and I, I didn't feel hungry anymore. And then, finally... This place is, well, infinitely worse. The Infinite House is a world filled with liminal spaces, cursed rooms, and other lurking things. It is the most dangerous place I... Stop. Did you see that? Yeah, neither did I. But as I traveled to this house, I couldn't shake my paranoia, and I felt hungry. I should have gotten takeout on my way.